Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Welcome, Chargers. We're glad to have you back again this week for another great guest. I tell you, the goal of the Charge Podcast is to find different guests with different viewpoints and allow you to really enhance your learning. And this week, I think you've got we've got a great guest because you're going to enjoy the topic because it pretty well happens every day. I'm going to leave the cliffhanger there and let you listen to his bio because you'll understand that. Jake... Jacobs is with us today. And for 35 years, Jake has worked in 61 industries from high tech to manufacturing, to hospitality, to entertainment, to financial services. Jake has consulted 96 organizations from Fortune 50 to national nonprofits and community theaters. He supported more than 210,000 people directly on important changes to their business. What kinds of changes? Everything from strategy implementation to culture change to mergers and acquisition and leadership development. Jake is partnered with CEOs, frontline workers, and change makers in middle management and organizations like Ford, Kraft, Marriott. He's also helped create change in the city of New York, UK's National Health Service, and the United States Army and Navy. Clients call Jake when they need faster, easier, and better results. He has recently published Leverage Change, Eight Ways to Achieve Faster, Easier, and Better Results, and an approach you can apply to individuals and teams and organizations. It works equally well if you have already have a change approach with which you're working on, or you're looking for a new one to deploy. Are you part of the way through your change work or just starting? In every case, Jacob's Eight Levers can help you get there faster, easier and better than you believe possible. Jake, it is great to have you on the Charge Podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much, Gary, and thank you for that introduction. Well, I appreciate you coming on. The way I set that up in the very beginning, hopefully they know what we are going to talk about now. We're going to talk about change, but we're also going to talk some about the book about leverage change that you recently published and why that's so important. But I'd love to go back. Your bio gave us some great detail there, but I love to start with the story. How did you get into this business and really decide what you wanted to do to be that change agent yourself? Yeah, Gary, I was uh, 22 years old and I was working for a project at the Institute for Social Research at the University of Michigan. And there was a national study about uh, uh, mental health facilities providing substance abuse treatment. And the question was, could they do this well? And so my job in that project was to fly around the country, which as a 22 year old, that was was a good deal. Now older, maybe not so appealing, um, even with uh, 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 COVID coming back and us getting into the air. But I was going to do case studies at each of these facilities. And I would fly in, do interviews, and go back to my hotel room and write up the case study and get on a plane and head to the new location. I was in Buffalo, New York, and I can remember it like it was yesterday. There was a woman there who was the executive director of the mental health center. And I was interviewing her about the substance abuse treatment programs and protocols that they were following. And she took a heavy sigh and she was sitting behind her desk and I had my laptop open and I kind of sat back in my chair. I didn't know what she was going to say. She sat back in her chair and she pulled the blinds open in her office that looked out across the street. And she said, you you see those guys standing on the street corner? And I said, yeah. And there were some young men standing on the street corner. It didn't look anything particularly unusual to me. And she said, uh, that's where our clients go out to get high before they come in for their sessions. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, I mean, 
I typed it up. I wrote up my case study and I got back to my room that night in the hotel. And I decided at that point at 22 years old that I wasn't going to be doing research. I wasn't going to go get a PhD in organizational psychology, that I had to be on the front lines of working with people to stop stories like this from having to be told and actually work in organizations where it's messy and difficult and challenging and where change is needed. And whether that's in that mental health center or whether it's on a manufacturing line or an R&D laboratory, it really doesn't matter because there's better work that can be done and people deserve to be able to do that work and the customer deserves it too. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing that because it really shows kind of why you decided you wanted to dig in what you, um, area of your expertise. And I'm really kind of curious to dig in this because, you know, in organizations, the one thing that is constant is change. Yeah. But the one thing that everyone kind of let's repels from is change, you know, because yeah. of course, if it's someone else, it's fine. But if it's me going through it, then that's not good. So it's going to be really curious to see how you've been able to work with organizations in this. And I think it's going to be so helpful because I have a lot of leaders that listen to my podcast, as well as business owners, because, you know, there's some people that take change very easy and they like that. We thrive in that. I'll be honest. I'm one of those. I drive my wife crazy because I like <laughs> to change things all the time. Um, yeah. She likes it a more like the similar, the what's going on. Well, why aren't, why don't we do that again and continue to do that that way? So let's start off here because you kind of have an antidote for change fatigue that is plaguing so many organizations. And we've talked about that already a little bit of that. What is that, that fa change fatigue and why is it really plaguing those organizations? Good. So Gary, this one is one for your listeners and it's one for you and your wife. So most people, um, when they deal with change, it's what they talk about. It's what they focus on. Books are written about it. Speeches are given. Podcasts, uh, hosts, interview people about change. And what I do in the world of change is that I also talk about what not to change. And I think that change fatigue, that people suffer from this because there is an over-focus on doing things differently. And I think that raises people's anxiety. It raises their apprehension. Uh, they stop doing their best work. And the reality is there is another hand clapping. There is another side to the coin. And so I came up with levers to address common problems that organizations face. And one of them, as you said, is change fatigue. So how do we deal with this? Well, there's a lever that I designed called pay attention to continuity. And what this means is that if you can pay attention to the things that you've done well in the past, and there's a long list of things that are gonna continue as you move forward, regardless of how radical the change is in the organization or team or in, in your own life, that if you pay attention to continuity, I believe that people have firm ground to step off of and take a leap into the unknown, which is that future. So I talk with leaders about when they send a memo out to talk about what they've done well and what they're gonna continue doing as well as what they're going to change. And even to start with the continuity part of that equation, because people settle down a little bit, it feels crazy making, for folks in organizations being bombarded by change right and left. And I believe that if we sit down, I have clients make lists of all the changes going on and they do make these lists on flip charts and get a little uh, disempowered slump in their chairs and feel overwhelmed. This is executives as well as it is frontline workers. And then I say, let's make another list of all those things that are gonna stay the same. Except this time make the list twice as long. And they start making these lists and all of a sudden you see them sit a little straighter in their chair, lean forward a little bit more, feel a little more in control because there is a lot that power in continuity. And I think if we pay attention to this more in the notes that we write, I even have workshops where people say, what are we going to keep doing and what are we going to start doing anew and make sure that as they go forward, they don't drop the ball on the things that they're doing well. 
I think that's so important because so many people, they feel like they're just in that cycle of change, as you say. And then of course it feels like, to be quite honest, it's not fun to show up to work. And then of course you don't bring the best self forward. And when people aren't, when people aren't, don't have some comfort level, they can't produce at a higher result. Yeah. And the the other thing I would say about this, Gary, and you know, you can apply it to your wife as well, because um, when you talk with people who love change about continuity and the reasons for it and what to continue doing and decide together about it, people who love change, look at that because reasonable people exposed to reasonably the same information come up with reasonably the same conclusions. Mm -hmm. And so if your wife has some things that she really wants to hold on to, she has a conversation with you, you're going to look at it It may not get you excited, but you're unlikely to argue with her. And if there are things that really are energizing for you that you want to do differently, and they make sense, given your relationship or your business, people who like to hold on to stability, They see that and they say, it's okay, I can roll with that as long as we're dealing with the whole picture, which is both change and continuity. Yeah, and I think that's the real key is them seeing the whole picture and that what you're sharing, it really allows them to do that. Now you make a bold claim, so I've got to kind of hear this, that you can shorten the time that it takes to create change in organizations by 50% or more. Yeah. So how is that possible? All right, so... Here's the trick for this, Gary, and this can work for everybody, not just for me, but every one of your listeners, because I'm going to start by saying, I think what gets in the way of the speed of change is a flawed paradigm. Mm. We're literally making sense of the world in ways that we don't have to, that lock us in to change being slow. So what does that mean? Well, When I talk about the future, most people will say, well, if I'm talking about the future, it's something that's going to occur at a later point in time than right now. Now, I could talk about two years from now. I can talk about five years from now. But these are all points in time that are separate from me. And if I do my job well in two years or five years, that's where I'm going to end up. I may have goals or a vision and, you know, people may be happy with that. I say, no, you're waiting too long. And here's why. There's a lever called think and act as if the future were now. So think and act as if the future were now says, get some image of what that future is that you prefer. It might be two years, might be five years down the road. It doesn't matter how far any image that you get of the future If you say, if I were living that today, if that were my reality, if that were my life, how would I think and act in this particular situation? Mm -hmm. And if I can adopt that reality and say, well, let's see, if I want to be customer focused and that's the kind of organization that I want, what can I do right here in this moment to be more customer focused. And I've had clients sit down in meetings and say, well, this is the kind of culture we want. And I said, well, what are we doing to reflect that right now? And they have actually, in the middle of a senior executive team meeting, stopped the meeting, called the big customer and asked them for input about the issue that they're wrestling with. If they're gonna be customer focused, they don't have to wait for two years or five years, something for the culture to change. The culture changes as soon as your behavior and your mindset change. And when those change, your results change. So this 50%, I may have been generous. It may be more like 70 or 80% instead of just 50. But the notion of changing your paradigm is very powerful for the people that I've worked with. Yeah, that is huge because I talk a lot about paradigms too and mindsets because what we tell ourselves, that's what ends up happening. So the thing is, if we're telling ourselves, oh, we want to get here, and I just love that with the lever is think and act like the future is now, you start living that right now. But it also means you have to start thinking it. You know, you said not just act, you also have to think it because you got to change those thoughts that go in because our thoughts give us our input and output. Yeah, and I would, t- I would argue with your, with your listeners, you don't have to believe me that this is true. You, you don't have to have faith that this is the case. You just try it on for size. 
you find a situation that you want to be different, get an image of it, and then act as if you were already there. And you will prove to yourself how much faster change happens. Because the other thing is you get a virtuous cycle. As I start to see you changing and doing business in new ways, it's an invitation for me to start changing and do business in new ways. Yeah, that's so true. And I tell you, and this is an area that in so many organizations, change just, you know, really hurts organization. It really reduces productivity. It reduces, you know, morale, um, the culture, as you talked about. So it's so important to how can we create this alignment and allow people to really move forward. And it's kind of the next area that I really wanted to kind of talk about with you is you kind of talk about aligned action is often the downfall of many change efforts. How do you recommend our listeners avoid the issue once and for all and kind of really be able to realize that to get everybody rowing in the same boat? Right. So I'm going to go back and talk about what I believe is the critical nature of information in organizations. Mm -hmm. And when I get the right information, I can make smart decisions. And for leaders, when they look at frontline employees, sometimes it looks like they just don't get it. Like this is where we're headed, but they're behaving in ways that aren't going to get us there. And the front line will look at work that they're doing on a daily basis and say, you know, they're asking us from the top of the house to do things that just aren't possible. And what I believe is missing in these organizations is one of the levers called create a common database. And what that common database is depends on what's happening in the organization and what do people know. So on LinkedIn, I do these videos called Jake on Change. They're just a couple of minutes with a message. And one of them I said was on, do you have a secret that somebody else needs to know? So if I go to work and I say, is there some information that I have that if I shared it with somebody else, they would be able to do their job more effectively? Basically, I'm keeping a secret from them. And it's not helpful. So the more people that I can find to share strategic information with, and the smarter the organization can get, literally the organization's intelligence increases, what I have found is that alignment comes for free. You don't have to work on alignment when you have a common database because it makes sense to people what you're trying to do. And you can give people permission to take a lot more independent action so you don't have to micromanage people because they're operating with the same database. The strategy makes sense. They got it in their gut. They know what their job is. They know what their contribution is and they go out and they do it. And then they bring information back that needs to be shared in the organization as well. So having that organizational intelligence raised a few notches helps with alignment immeasurably. Yeah, I can see that. And that really, how, that information is the key. And, you know, information becomes what we're communicating. And the challenge is normally the people that are doing the work don't get the same communication. I had that challenge. I had about 150 employees at my height. And I would always tell my leaders, when we get done with this, you got to go back and share. Because if you don't share what we're doing, they just think, oh, you're off for two or three days at a conference and they don't have any clue what's going on with that and how that information sharing becomes so important. Well, there's so many different ways that we can go, but we're kind of getting up on that time where we're going to have to wrap up. But before we do, I really wanted to share, and I know you've shared some of those levers that you talk about in your book, but with Leverage Change, you just recently published this. If I was going to pick up that book, and I have not got the opportunity, Jake, I apologize that I didn't get to read it ahead of time. But if I was going to pick up that book and I was a leader listening to this, what really I know you're going to get the eight levers of change. What really can help them by picking up and reading your book? Well, I think that there is uncommon wisdom in these levers. And uncommon wisdom, I'm saying like, think and act as if the future were now is a new paradigm. Paying attention to continuity when you're trying to change is a fresh perspective on this. So what they're gonna take away is 44 stories of people just like them 
who are out there wrestling with the dilemmas and the challenges of creating change. And in each of these levers, I go through the chapters and it's very concrete stuff. This is not a theoretical book. This is something that you can carry with you. It's got ideas and actions that you can take. And it's all about, at the end of the day, faster, easier, better results. And that title was not by mistake. So anytime that you're looking for results and you want them to be faster, easier, and better, these eight levers are going to help you. At the individual level, it could be a relationship with a peer or a subordinate that you're having trouble with, your team, even setting an agenda for a team meeting, the levers will help you. And I've done a lot of work organization-wide, culture change, strategy implementation, like you were reading about, it works at all of these levels. So anything that they want faster, easier, and better, and most of us do, this is the book for you. Super. I appreciate you sharing that. Share with them, Jake, number one, your website. And then if they are interested in the book, where is the best place to go to get a copy? Sure. So jakejacobsconsulting.com is the site. And, you know, your local bookstores, any online or independent bookstores, Amazon is the easiest thing. You can go right into their search engine for leverage change. It'll pop right up. And what I would ask people is read the book and then give an honest review on Amazon. If it doesn't somehow move your world, if it doesn't make a profound difference, then let people know give them a warning. But if it does, make sure that you tell your story, because I think more and more people using this approach will lead to better and better organizations. Yeah, and that becomes the key. And the one thing I'd like you to share is you have on your website, you're willing to give them an ebook um, that they can get some information. So anybody at this topic is really interested, your organization, maybe they do change um, not very good right now, and you want to bring some tools to it you have a little ebook that you're willing to provide to the chargers. Is that correct? Yeah. And this book uh, is 27 ways to achieve faster, easier, better results immediately. So what I did is I looked at each of those eight levers and came up with three or four very simple, immediate application ideas that you could go and take to the bank, make a deposit and start getting a return on immediately. One example, if you have a change effort where people are resisting it, go find somebody who doesn't like what you're doing and ask them why. Mm -hmm. Listen to what they're saying and see together if you can find a better way forward. So rather than fighting with these people or trying to convince them, go and listen. And then based on that, ask them for their help and how to bring themselves and others like them on board. So they're very tangible things that you could pick up and take off from reading the book and put into action right away. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. Again, if you're looking for that, it's Jake jacobsconsulting.com. Of course, I know you may be active right now doing something else besides just sitting here listening to us to be able to write it down. So you know, my son, Chris, puts together the editing of the podcast. He does great show notes. So just go to chargepodcast.com when you get a chance, and then you'll be able to click right onto that and it'll link right to Jake's website. So I appreciate chargers because I know this is a topic number one, that's going on in every organization. So I know this is a very practical topic for our listeners that's here today. Well, Jake, before I let you go, I have each guest has three recharge round questions that I like to ask them. And as you know, and you've kind of did some research with the Charge podcast, you know, it's create habits around real goals every day. So my first question to you that I ask every guest what habit or habits that's led to success in your life do you feel? For me, the answer is simple, learning. So my habit of going out, whether it's reading, listening to podcasts, reading the paper, blog posts, uh, videos, whatever it may be, taking courses. I took a number of courses. I was reinventing my own business and took a number of courses over the last couple of years. So that orientation to learning and being curious about things rather than 
pushing away new ideas and saying, no, I've got the answer. I'm never going to have the answer, Gary. And so it's always about asking the question, what's next and what else can I learn? Yeah, no, I appreciate you sharing that because that becomes a real key that allows you to move forward in your life and chargers are looking for that. Now I have a little philosophy. I don't know if you like going to the spa to get a nice massage, but I have a little philosophy called spa that's called simple positive action. Right. What's one simple positive action you do each day to help you move forward towards your goals? Yeah, so what I do in this case, my spa, right, is linking the work I'm doing, all of the work I'm doing to my vision. Mm. So if I'm out and in the world to serve people who are struggling because they're achieving fewer changes it's harder and more disappointing. If that's what my vision is to serve those people, then everything I do every day, I tie back to that. And I make sure if, if it's not serving that purpose, then I shouldn't be doing it. And when I am doing things that serve that purpose, I feel my own sense of alignment. So my counsel would be look to your goals, look to your vision and make sure your behavior is consistent with it. Oh, great one. Thank you for sharing that. How about your biggest life lesson? What did you learn from it? Well, this one I got from my dad and I was uh, 22 years old, having just come from Buffalo. I had a number of very attractive uh, scholarship offers to get a PhD like Harvard, MIT, Stanford, a lot of very well-known, the Wharton School at Penn, number of places. And, and for my dad, this was like a great thing. I mean, he was proud, but it was also like, these people were gonna pay me to go to school. And I came home and I said to him, I said, dad, I gotta go to work. I've gotta go help these organizations rather than study them. And he said to me, and I still remember, he's 91 years old. He lives five doors down from me, oh, right? Nice. I moved back to where I grew up. And he said to me, he said, look, I don't understand why you would want to do what you're telling me you want to do. And I believe you know best how you should live your life. And so that affirmation from him and that confidence in him that I knew best what's right for me, I take into my work with organizations every day. And so I don't come in with answers to organizations and say, you should be this way or that way. I come in and what I do is I help those organizations uncover the wisdom that lies with it and find their own answers to the challenges that they're facing. And I have that same confidence that my dad instilled in me that I instill in my clients. Wow, that is awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. And it really shows your passion of what you do and why you love really impacting organizations because it makes a direct change and makes it now and kind of really brings the full focus of why you wrote the book Leverage Change exactly um, you know, with the paradigm shift. So Jake, I can't thank you enough for sharing with the Chargers and giving us your expertise and being here on the Charge Podcast. Share with them again, your website one more time. Sure, www.jakejacobsconsulting.com. And remember, it's in show notes. So just go to chargepodcast.com if you couldn't get that down. Um, we always have it right there and all the information is available to you. Jake, again, it's been a great podcast and I appreciate you sharing. Thanks so much for having me on, Gary. Chargers, I hope you think about change a little bit differently. Um, several things came the top to me, but instead of being in that change fatigue, how can we really change our paradigm? And I love this lover, think and act like the future is now. So I want you to do that right now, Chargers. I want you to think about, think and act like your future is now. What do you want it to be? And then start living into it each day. We're going to come back next week. This is a great guest again that I would share this podcast. I've been asking that from the last several podcasts. Remember, you have a share button in your podcast app, whichever you're on. A lot of times it's got three little dots. Just press that. You can easily send a text message. And if you got a friend that is challenged right now on change, this would be a great podcast to share with them. Come back next week and we'll have another great guest for you. Make it a great day. We'll see you next week.
This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.